So now we're going to have the next presentation of the health basics. Um, and today we have Flo, Florian Goat showing to us the, how the interactions are implemented in health. Flo, it's yours. Thank you. Thank you, Jefferson, for the nice introductory words. Um, so my name is Florian Goat. I'm doing a bit of an introduction to the interactions in the BSF algorithms and algorithm and how it's uh, some details of on how it's implemented in the um, uh, ALF code package. Uh, if you have questions, um, yeah, make sure to, to make sure to be heard. Uh, I don't see a chat. I don't see your faces, um, but it will work out anyway. I'm, uh, I'm sure of that. Great. So, what do we have for today? Um, we will look into the in, in, in at the Hamiltonian again. Uh, of, uh, you have seen that the Hamiltonian now in a lot of different um, manifestations and in a lot of different talks. Uh, we will focus a bit on the interaction Hamiltonian. We will um, talk about about the necess necessity for perfect squares. We work through a bit of the special case of the Hubbard model and how it maps to the operator type. And in the end, I will give you some outline for the pre for some outlook for the predefined structures that you can already use uh, for defining your um, own models. Okay. So you are by now familiar with uh, the Hamiltonian, uh, which uh, is split up into a couple of parts. You have the kinetic energy part, you have an interaction part, uh, you have an, um, um, a coupling part between Ising spins and fermions, and you have the um, Ising type uh, three uh, action that can be specified by the user, which is not part of, yeah, which, which you can find, find more about in the documentation. Um, today we focus here on the middle part, the interaction, a similar talk for the hopping itself is tomorrow. And it has this uh, lengthy structure. So you have, you see here that it's the square of a quadratic form in the fermionic operators with coupling matrices V here in between. You have these shifts alpha and additionally you have a sum over all the um, flavors or the color indices, you have a coupling strength UK, and uh, you can have MV terms of these. And at the end of the day, you may, need to make sure that what, uh, what you want to simulate, the, the physical model that you're interested in, uh, can be somehow mapped to this um, yeah, top-down uh, top looking form. It's a sum of, interact of interactions with a coupling strength times, times a squared a single particle operator. Okay, um, what do we have next? So uh, to reiterate, uh, to look into that in a bit more detail, here you have the interaction matrix, um, which has a dimension, which can have a dimensionality of um, the uh, um, spatial um, a number of spatial indices. You have uh, optionally a shift, which is a well real or complex number. Um, you have uh, the number of flavors and the number of colors, and you need to make sure that this maps out to, uh, to actually form a perfect square. Okay. And the first example that we're looking at is the Hubbard interaction vertex. This is the uh, toy example that we often work with. So canonically, you might want to write down uh, your Hubbard interaction vertex in this particular form. Um, so such that local, uh, um, a local interaction such that spins of oppo opposite direction um, attract or repel each other depending on the sign of you. And um, uh, you might immediately immediately notice that this has not yet uh, the required form that you need to need to have. It's not yet a perfect square form. And depend e either through ingenuity that you or you know the um, solution from uh, a couple of other algorithms or from looking into the literature. I, this particular paper from the 80s. Um, I've, uh, you you know that uh, for the the particular case of the Hubbard. Uh, interaction has a one parameter representation such that um, uh, you can introduce a free real parameter alpha and rewrite it in, in this particular way with newly defined uh, operators, um, RZ and SC, 
which are either um, the, uh, um, the related to the magnetization, the difference of the upspins minus the downspins, or they are related to the total density, so the sum of the upspins and the downspins. Um, and uh, so, uh, yeah. So depending on how you choose alpha, you now have two possibilities of how you can implement that. Uh, so if you use alpha equals to one third, you have um, here the, at, uh, at a density like term and a coupling to, uh, you um, find a representation as a square of the SZ operator. So uh, you can rewrite the Hubbard interaction in this particular way. Or if you choose another value of the const uh, of, of the free parameter alpha equal to one third, you find um, a, a representation in terms of these RZ operator operators, which couple to the total density on a side. And so you have these two possibilities for for re rewriting the um, Hubbard, the original Hubbard interaction in terms of a, a perfect square. Um, and also notice that they have different signs in front of them, depending on uh, can can be beneficial if you use that. So for for, um, for for going on, let's pretend we are interested here in this uh, in my, here in the notes. It's the SZ presentation, and this refer, uh, refers exactly to the MZ representation that you find in the documentation, or you have seen in various tutorials here on um, simulations for the Hubbard model. Uh, okay. So how does that work out? So now we have our original interaction, uh, n up times n down. We introduce, we re rewrite that, uh, we, we use it that uh, we can rewrite that in terms of this SZ operator. Um, the additional constant is uh, we can leave, that, that turns up, we can leave out that since it is not um, affecting the Monte Carlo update. And then we have uh, this particular form here. So we have minus u over two time, uh, times the sum over all lattice sides. And on each lattice side, we have the square of the uh, difference of the up spins minus the down spins. And now to progress a bit, we can uh, rewrite that uh, here as um, we introduce an artificial sum. So s equals one to two, uh, oh, plus to minus. Uh, such that um, we have uh, an additional prefactor here. And we can then compare that with a generic form that we have, which, which I have written uh, down here, here below. So the, we now have a square, this is perfect. We can immediately see that we don't have a shift. Uh, this representation up here doesn't require that. Um, we have uh, a quadratic form in the fermionic operators. So C dagger here, we have that here, and uh, the, um, the undaggered version of C, we have that here and up here. And now we need to make sure that we recast the matrix expression that we have found here um, in terms of uh, the matrix that is introduced in here. And um, uh, yep. And uh, the interact we can also read of the interaction strength uh, UK. So it is constant. Uh, you, um, it's constant everywhere. So it has no dependence. And we know that we have um, uh, only a single um, uh, term of these interactions. Oh. Uh, yeah. So we can read that off. So we have two flavors. We have only a single color. We have. <clears throat> Um, we have the MV is equal to NL. The interaction strength is U over two. Uh, the, we have two, uh, two versions here of the, inter, uh, of the coupling matrix in between them given by delta, uh, by um, Kronecker deltas with a prefactor depending on the value of S. So for S equals one, we have plus. For S equals two, we have a minus one. And the shift is equal to zero. And these are now the ingredients we need to figure out on paper. So this is work you have to do on paper. Um, and now we can go with that and uh, try to figure out how we um, implement to implement that in Fort in, in Fortran code. And yeah. So th there are a couple of questions that we have to ask. So if you, um, I am, I'm assuming if you want to implement your own interaction, so it basically also means you want to implement your own Hamiltonian. So how do you write your own Hamiltonian? So in um, 
very top down view since there are since you are either you have already each heard it from Jonas in the introduction and also I think tomorrow afternoon there will be an, another talk on how to define your own Hamiltonian and so but um, to recapitulate a bit so what you have to do you have to create a Hamiltonian submodule sub, sub module in the subfolder Hamiltonians the name that you have chosen for your particular Hamiltonian, you need to add it to the Hamiltonians.list, and of course, uh, you need to uh, you need to provide the required data. What does it look like? This is what the submodule um, kind of look like looks like. So I have to um, I had to had to remove a couple of bits to put put it onto the screen. You have to define a couple of functions. You have to define your name. And that you derive uh, from the Hamiltonian base um, type, and uh, with that uh, you 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 end that down here. Here on the slide, I have put a couple of variables that you do not need to define, but which are well kind of important for me to refer to them. These are the op v arrays, the op t arrays, the n dim and n number of flavors and n s u n. You don't need to define them in your own Hamiltonian. You um, um, obtain them by deriving from the base Hamiltonian. But they they are so basically speaking, they are present when you def they are present uh, when you um, derive them but you have to set them up properly and provide the required data. Ah, yeah. So as you have seen, uh, the op v uh, array, um, let's go back, uh, the op v type that you have to specify is here the interaction. And it is this, uh, this, is, this is the array that, um, uh, that makes up this, the operators in the alf code. And it's given uh, each, um, of these interaction vertices is specified by a so-called operator type. So the next thing that we have to figure out is uh, um, what does this operator actually look like? Which information does it require from us such that we can use it? And the 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 condensed uh, the condensed view of this operator type is it has these four variables which are these uh, five variables these are the variables that mostly you um, interact with as a user if you're interested more into the details look into into the operator mod.f90 file <clears throat> and it has a couple of um, variables that you need to specify this is your duty as a user so you have the um, um and yeah yeah you have a couple of uh, have a couple of things you have the um since you can uh you, we have this notion of uh projection um, operator such that you can reduce big matrices to smaller uh, to smaller matrices uh, this is one thing that you can use uh, because it um, follows from the equation down here you are your interaction can be uh, reformulated as um, these, uh, this multiplication of the pro uh, projector operator times a small matrix times a, uh, times a big matrix again. And therefore we can reduce uh, the size on, of your operators. You probably rem uh, remember from the example with the Hubbard model in the MZ representations, um, these were, were mostly given by Kronecker Delta. So a lot of the entries of that matrix, it's a very sparse matrix and you don't need all of these um, uh, of, of these entries. So what you need now to specify is you need to specify the projection operator P, um, which has a LAPAG-like uh, LAPAG or a yeah, LAPAG-like representation in terms of a single vector of integers. Um, you need to specify the small matrix, uh, the O operator in here. Such that we can reconstruct, such that we can reconstruct, if actually needed, the full interaction uh, matrix. Um, this is a two, uh, this is a uh, matrix of complex numbers. You need to specify the if, uh, you can specify or you need to specify the effective dimension uh, that this operator has. You need to specify the coupling strength. Uh, so for our example here, it is the square root of delta tau times the inter interaction strength UK. So here is where the interaction strength comes in, but also uh, the, um, the, st the step size uh, that you have chosen for the um, uh, trotter decomposition and the square root from the hubbard stratonovich transform. And the operator also contains the information about the shift that you have introduced in the re that you might have introduced in the rewriting um, of your interaction. 
Okay. Um, this was how the operator looked like. And now we can move on to how to actually set that up in our code. So in the Hamiltonians that uh, we provide have a kind of um, a convention that all the setup of the interaction happens in an, in an HamV subroutine that does, that does the setup of the interaction actually. Um, what you have to do first, you have to allocate the array in the right uh, size. So um, the number of actual interaction vertices and the number of flavors, these are the dimension that the dimensions that this array has to have. You have to initialize every operator. This is for, for this you use the op make function. Um, and then you can uh, iterate uh, in a loop, for example, over the uh, into all the operators that you have created and set their internal data. Uh, so you loop over the, over the number of flavors and um, then you, lo you loop over the number of lattice sites. Uh, you set the projection operator to just be um, have us um, an entry where uh, where the uh, at the particular site where the interaction is actually interacting. Um, there, the interaction matrix is very small; it's just a single entry. You set uh, the interaction strength to the square root of delta tau times uh, u over two. And depending on the flavor that you're looking at, either it's a plus or a minus in front, you have no shift and um, you have to for the um, you have to set the type of the interaction uh, of the uh, interaction of the operator, which has to be set to two since it is an um, uh, since it utilizes the discrete <coughs> discrete Hubbard Stratonovich uh, transformation and not a continuous one. And with that information, you can uh, then call offset on that particular operator, and it will um, basically uh, set, uh, set up all the internal state of the uh, of the operator. So there are a couple of um, additional helper arrays and data structures. When you have uh, specified your inter all your, all the interactions that you have in the Hamvi subroutine, then what you usually do, you have a subroutine ham set, and they usually can just call to Hamv for the interactions, and for example, ham t if you might want to call it for uh, the for the hopping uh, matrices. Alternatively, if you do not want to go uh, through the hassle of um, def uh, def defining every operator yourself, uh, you can use our predefined structures. So for the Hubbard MZ representation, you still have to create uh, the array, but then you can just call the predefined interaction with a strength of u of an interaction in the MZ representation, where you call that function on the um, interaction operate. On, on the two interaction operators with the respective parameters, and it will take care of setting the internal state of that operator um, entirely. This might also be the way that you want to go if you use uh, the um, SU, if you, if you intend to use the SUN representation of the interaction, uh, there you just call a different function. So it's predefined interaction U SUN it's for an SUN Hubbard type interaction. Um, so this would be it for the Hubbard model for the plain, simple Hubbard model on-site interaction type. Uh, there are a couple of other predefined interactions that we provide. So another example is <clears throat> the TV model, which also has an um, hopping type, but also has already an interaction given in the uh, required form as a square of, um, as a perfect square of, an, um, of a lo locally acting operator. And here, uh, here you have to also the, you have to perform the same things. You have to figure out the dimension, uh, have to figure out the dimensionality of the space uh, that you're considering, the number of flavors and the number of colors. How many oper operators are there? The interaction strength here in the um, uh, TV model, it's a, glo a, a global interaction strength of minus v over n, and also this model has no uh, shift um, in the squared operator. But uh, since the um, uh, uh, coupling matrix for the quadratic form of the interaction is a bit more complicated, it's not just a single real value, it's a two by two matrix with this particular structure denoting that it couples um, 
um, next near next nearest neighbor sites. And for that, you also need to invest a bit more work in uh, in the projection vector, such that one entry is uh, set to i and one entry is set to j, uh, to denote which sites are actually next neighbors on your particular lattice. So here you have a kind also an interaction with the lattice structures, uh, which are part of another talk. Um, if you want to look uh, into more of the details of this particular model, um, the sign problem has been discussed, discussed by Farker and collaborators here in this paper. And also there is a predefined interaction defined for this particular model. And there you have to look in the documentation for predefined interaction, VSUN. That's the function call that you want to look into. Um, Couple of other models uh, where we de already define predefined interactions such that you do not have to define them yourself. There's the uh, predefined interaction um, which couples to an Ising degree of freedom. So it's this particular type of Hamiltonian, um, which can be uh, uh, um, for every diff on different um, on every lattice side. There's also already predefined uh, an interaction for long range for the long range cooler uh, repulsion. So you, as you are not restricted to local Hubbard interactions. You can uh, intend to study this particular model. And there you'll have to look for the function predefined interaction long range cooler, LRC. And if you're interested into spin models, uh, there's also the J's. Uh, um, Spin models, yeah. This uh, JZ JZ interaction type, which has uh, this particular form, and um, that is already already predefined for you, such uh, that you can uh, utilize it. Okay. As you, uh, if you are interested in uh, in actually um, having a couple spin models, so condo models, so there is a bit of more work um, involved. Um, just to uh, give you a basic idea of it so you have a, uh, the, the, the Hamiltonian that you're trying to consider decouples in a lot of uh, or is, pl uh, is split into a lot of um, different parts you have a Hamiltonian denoting your free spin, dy spin dynamics you have a fermionic part of the Hamiltonian where you have the free dynamics of the uh, fermions but also the um, Hubbard type interaction for the for, for, for the um, for the fermions and then you have uh, for the condo model you have a coupling between fermions and spin degrees of freedom and what people are utilizing uh, here then is uh, they introduce uh, um, a fermionic, a fermionic representation of the spin operators and after a couple of after quite some algebra they arrive at a representation of the full interaction in terms of perfect squares so here the final hamiltonian can be rewritten uh, as uh, the here you have the square of um, the newly introduced uh, f operators up here you have another term for the f operators um, and down here, you still uh, you have the remaining um, uh, fermionic degrees of freedom, but also they have um, kind of some transformation with this um, uh, <clears throat> site dependent rewriting of um, site dependent representation of the fermions, and the you have um, a coupling between the fermions and your newly fermionic spin degrees of freedom. Uh, um, here in the end of it. If you want more further results on that particular model, um, Toshi, uh, Toshihiro Faka and Tarun Grover have published that um, in 2018, and probably there's more to, uh, in uh, how to motivate this rewriting. Okay. Um, that would be all. That's all I have to tell you about the interactions in ALF. Um, so you have seen. Uh, the data structures that are, that are involved in defining uh, your interaction. You have seen a simple example and a couple of more uh, complicated examples. And you've also have seen an overview of what are predefined interactions that you can utilize as building blocks together with the predefined toppings and the lattices in defining uh, your own um, Hamiltonians. Thank you for your attention.
Thank you, Flo. I think there's a question in the chat from Andrea Saler, correct? I don't know if you answered it already. No, I think not. No. Hi, sorry. Um, for, for, for the spin model or for the, uh, uh, for, for the, for the last model? model here? So per site, uh, you need four flavors in order to build the full Hamiltonian. Is that correct? Or? Um, I guess so, since you have this, the fermion, uh, you have the C fermions and the F fermions, both of them, share, both of them have spin. Um, and is it, uh, yeah, and it should, this should be in, should go into the flavor, um, in, okay. in the flavor enumerator, basically, not in the color enumerator. Okay, I see. Thanks. How am I doing with time? Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. One question, too. Yeah, sorry. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I, I just want to make sure. So at the moment, ALF uh, does not, you know, you can describe an EML tuning that can be written in the form A dag A. It like it only takes into account interactions like A squared. Uh, can you can you repeat? Because A squared uh, A squared is a perfect square. What do you mean by A? Yeah. yeah. So, no, no. I, I mean I mean something like A dag A instead of A squared. Can you can you do something like that? Because what I'm thinking of specifically is for for spin models, for instance, the Eisenberg model, people often do the uh, Hubbard Stratonovich in terms of singlet hopping and singlet uh, pairing, which would be written as A dag A and not as A squared instead um, of. Uh, yeah, assuming I understand you right, um, this would be a, uh, um, not, a, not a four fermion operator, but a two fermion operator. And by that. It'd be, it'd be, it's a four fermion operator. Okay. So um, yeah, so then you have to yeah, then it's the part of um, finding of of uh, finding an in, ingenious uh, rewriting of that into a perfect square. Yes. So this okay. is this is the way to do it. So let's assume that you have a dagger a, right? Yeah. And now, so you want so you have a dagger a plus a a dagger because everything has to be Hermitian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So then, what you will do. If I can share my if I can share my iPad, I'll show you how to do it. It's not so hard. So, or can let me let me uh, see if I can share my iPad uh, and um, not show you what I'm working on now. Perfect. And so now let's take this. It's very simple, but it's it's easier to put it on the on the iPad and you'll see it. Right. So, can you see my iPad? Uh, yeah. Probably soon. Yeah. Here it is. So you want this is what you want to do. A dagger A plus a, a dagger, correct? Mm -hmm. Did I understand the question at least? Yeah, exactly. So, so something okay, of so, this form. Okay, so here it is. Uh, mm, okay. Right, maybe there's a two, right? Yeah, okay. So, then, so then, then you have it. And that's exactly what we do. Because if you have spin models, right, this is exactly, if you have SUN or if you have spin models, that's what we do. So then you have to have, so you see, um, to, to decouple this, you need, um, you need one real here and one real here, which is actually because of this I purely imaginary. So you will mm -hmm. need a complex, basically. You will need a, 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 a complex variable, right? Okay. That's it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, very simple. Okay. It's, very simple. Uh, I'm not used to seeing it in that form. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you know, the, so, so I, I guess the more you work with Al, the more you, every time you go to a seminar, you just look at a Hamilton, you just translate it into perfect square. Automatic. Okay. So you'll, you'll get, if you get there, you're good. Well, or not. Okay. I'll stop the recording, I guess, because that's maybe not so interesting.